Greetings, my name is Neo Second, and welcome back to my Let's Play of Corpse Party Book of Shadows. Now, in the previous episode, I managed to finish uh, getting all the wrong ends for Chapter 5. And we got a little bit of prelude for what was in store for us in the next chapter, Chapter 6, when our, when our favorite Stabby McMurder Pants sh showed himself. Kizumi, to be precise. He showed up in uh, one of the uh, new scenes that I managed to unlock after completing and unlocking the true end for Chapter 5. And, well, we started the next chapter, Meyer, number, Chapter number 6. And, well, I'm Yuka. I'm tied to a table in a science lab. And Stabby McMurder Pants is basically brandishing his knife and living out his little sister complex. And... While he was doing that and basically terrorizing the shit out of the poor little girl, we're we are getting now treat we have were just treated to a flashback of Stabby McMurder Pants' earlier childhood, where he where, as I aware, well, it's pretty much just like uh, that one flashback back in uh, chapter f and uh, chapter four, I think, or is it five? Yeah, chapter five of uh, Blood Covered Repeated Fear, where he was shown basically. Uh, terrorizing and attempting to kill a hamster. He's just basically being a little uh, st Stabby McMurray Pants wannabe as a kid. So, I decided to call him Pocket Knife. Because his attempts at uh, being a murderous little psycho were strangely endearing and I just want to insult him. So, Pocket Knife. But yeah, it's... Uh, Basically him monologuing about the sort of, uh, I don't understand, woe is me, everybody's oppressing me, and my desire to be myself, sort of spiel that I hear pretty much every serial killer and every bit of fiction ever give whenever they decide to monologue about their poor, tragic pasts, and how they're just horribly misunderstood creatures of nature, and that everybody involved would be just better off if they just left them the fuck alone and let them do whatever they want. Completely ignoring and failing to understand why it is that the vast majority of the rest of humanity takes umbrage with uh, crazy little serial killers like Pocket Knife wanting to kill people. You know, it's... I guess you could call it cliche, I suppose, but I mean... But, but yeah, bottom line, it's nothing I haven't heard before. So... You're not really doing a good job getting any sympathy out of me, Pocket Knife. I just want to put that out there. So, yeah, that's pretty much everything, I think. There's not a whole lot that's really been occurring, that really occurred either in the, towards the very tail end of me completing Chapter 5 or the beginning of Chapter 6. Well, I guess unless you want to count the exposition beginning of Kizumi and the fact that Kizumi showed up in one of the wrong in one of the new scenes for Chapter Five, and we basically got to see a little bit about how Chihaya and Nari, I guess, ended up kicking the bucket, as it were. So, yeah. Beyond that, though, nothing super important, I think. So, with that being said, let's just go ahead and just jump right on into this, shall we? We were just we're just now finishing your flashback. <laughs> That's right. I've been like this for a long time. We know. So I've always tried to figure out how to intuit what others were are truly feeling. To get an honest reactions out of them. Oh come on, you can be honest. You're just trying to you were just trying to learn how to read people better so you could hide your own psychopathic tendencies better. That's pretty much every psychopath in a nutshell. Or at least the ones that are that are a little more functional compared to some of the other ones anyway. <laughs> No one seems to understand that I'm ca that I'm incapable of understanding the people around me. Well, it's understandable though, because I mean, a perfectly functional human being does have the capacity to emphasize with 
either other humans or even other living creatures, whether or not they choose to uh, listen to that empathy of theirs is a totally different matter, of course, but the capacity is still there for the vast majority of people. So, because of that, most people truly can not conceive of, a, of another human being who truly and completely lives without that capacity to emphasize at all with any other living creature. Which is basically what the, what the psychopath is in a nutshell. That I forget what, exactly which part of the brain it is that has to be inherently damaged in order for them to be what they are, but it's the part of the brain that allows, the, that allows a human to basically have a conscience. To express, to express pity, remorse, to empathize with uh, other living creatures, that sort of thing. Basically, your 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 complete and total capacity to think beyond your to think and understand beyond yourself. Basically, all uh, all 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 uh, psychopaths or people suffering with antisocial personality disorder suffer that kind of defect to some degree or another and obviously the more severe it is the harder time they have they they have expressing any empathy at all i mean they already do by default but obviously some express it worse than others depending on how severe their their meant had their brain damage is so to speak I hope i touched you oh, i hope i touch you guys something new I read, a, I read a book on this stuff once, just for the fun of it, on uh, understanding psychopaths and stuff like that. Very interesting stuff, human psychology, and biology to an extent too, I guess, because I am mostly talking about the human brain, but anyway, I will shut up now. I'm, I, know you, I know you guys aren't here to listen to me uh, give talks and lectures about psychopaths. 諸星術を得た俺は目立たず毎日を過ごすため常にそういう自分を演じるようになっていた。That's why I made a point of studying the world and keeping to myself, simply trying my best not to stand out. I play the part of a loner. つまらない話に興味を持ったかのようには。Who the hell are you? 同情したふりを装い、傷ついた顔を作ってやった。I pretend I'm interested in boring conversations and smile. I pretend I care about the problems of others and fake a concerned expression. Not a single one of my classmates has ever caught on to the fact that it's all just make-believe. They greet me with smiles, and I see through their lies. They all act they all act like they can judge a person based on his outward actions without ever seeing his true nature. Well people more often than not, not always of course, not always, but more often than not, tend to act in their true nature, which they express through their own actions. Physical actions. Because, I mean, they're, after all, it, it, it just goes with the saying, actions speak louder than words. Every one of them is completely deceived by my act. They're all empty-headed fools, worthy of only my contempt. They're just like my brother and sister. Unforgivable cretins who lie to my face. That's why I decided to conduct a little experiment. A way to see if I can really understand other people. And if I can make them understand me. Well, I'm pretty sure that, if nothing else, your experiment is will be very successful each and every single time. 
for the other people that you're terrorizing in order to get to in order to help them understand your true nature but you though well I have a feeling that this is a problem that you this is an experiment that you're going to be running indefinitely unless Yuka somehow manages to pull a miracle out of her bladder and make you actually truly comprehend what empathy is I wonder if any of you were aware that all I ever wanted was to kill you. Like animals. Humans are are honest only when they're on the brink of death. They all look at me right in the eye and engage me in real, true dialogue. With rare exception. Like, uh, like, uh, Mitsuki. A fine answer. Just what I was hoping for. Show me more. Show me more of those naked emotions. Yes, sadly. I will not perform. For you. And there was one there was one who held back the screams and the begging, and simply passed away in near silence. <laughs> the hell is that? You trying to stand up to me? <laughs> God, I remember this image. So this, so that really wasn't just an alternate universe tale then? You really did kill Mitsuki? Back in Blood Covered? And to think that when I examined her corpse, you put on quite the show and expressed pity, wondering who could have done something so horrible. At least I think that's what you expressed. It was a thoroughly unsatisfying kill. Good on you, Mitsuki. There needs to be a more mutual there needs to be more mutual understanding. I'd expected to see some change within myself after coming to this place. But there was nothing. I killed, but felt no remorse. No sympathy. None of the emotions I was supposed to feel. Yuya, life is a matter of life. Just Yuya. All life is equal. Don't ever forget that. All life is equal, huh? Yeah, it sure is. It's all exactly the same when it's snuffed out. Humans, animals, and filthy worms alike. But I suppose there is one difference. Even if it feels the same, after committing the sin of ending a human life, there's no turning back. No redemption. I didn't regret what I'd done, 
but it did make me realize that I had no prospects now. No future. What was that? Did I just feel pity for someone? My stomach's all growly. So, Yes, that's what it was even then. This odd sensation of taking pity on another human being. You're really shaking. Are you alright? I have to go to the bathroom. That badly? Why have you held it in for so long? I was with my big brother until just a moment ago. But we got separated. Didn't you tell your big brother that you needed to use the restroom? I don't quite remember this conversation happening. I did. But we just kept finding unusable bathrooms. And I thought about going somewhere else, but... I didn't want to see my big brother see me do that, so... <laughs> what a devoted little sister. Yes, this is just what I've been looking for. Being far weaker than I, whom I'm tasked to protect, tasked to protect. This is it. This is exactly it. <laughs> Um, is something wrong, Kizumi? If I had this girl by my side, this girl upon whom I actually took pity, then maybe there could still be a future even for a man like me. Indeed. If, if I'm capable of feeling sorry for someone, then maybe there still exists some means of atoning for my sins. If I could just live with this little girl. <laughs> you are a pedal hunter's wet dream. Even though you haven't explicitly ever made so much as an inclination of a sexual advance towards her, they would still be freaked the fuck out by you. So Rightfully so, I must I must say. So how about it? Will you live with me? Huh? What? You I think I'll be okay on my own. I'll look for my big brother by myself. By yourself. Why? After I finally found a little sister. Why must even she distance herself from me? You really should think about that long and hard. Like, really long and hard. Maybe then, you might... Might... Truly, 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 truly get a hint of an understanding... Why 
people would be terif would absolutely terrified of you if they understood what you really are. No. No! Love it to run! Mameda! Ishoniko! Bad rabbit. You're coming with me. <laughs> You're such a ham. I can't believe the game waited this long just to bring you into the picture. Seriously. You're just a really sick, twisted treasure, Kizumi. I'd been screaming and crying so much that my throat was now bone dry. I couldn't manage any more than a whimper. <laughs> my throat was actually in a lot of pain. It burned like someone had cut it wide open. No, if you lower your voice a couple more octaves, you might sound a bit like Hammer Time. Kizumi had raised a knife as if he were about to kill me, but for some reason, he just froze like that. And all I could do was lie there, struggling to breathe. Aside from his heavy panting, I could only hear the sound of my own chattering teeth. see my big brother again. Even if it's just one last time. I breathed in as deeply as I could, then mustered every last bit of strength I had. I wanted to call out with all my might. I wanted to call for help. Brother. <laughs> No good. The sentiment was there, but the words couldn't possibly have been heard by anyone else. Except the person I didn't want to hear them. Big Brother won't know won't know to come to help me if that's as loud as I can go. Pig Brother You're giving me a full dime. And then went in some change. Keep the big brothers coming. I want to go grocery shopping. <laughs> Another dime. <gasps> My strange scream seemed to snap keys me out of his trance. He brought the tip of his, his knife down onto my cheek, but didn't break the skin. <laughs> you know, you do know that no matter how much you scream, no one's going to come save you, right? He was looking down at me with blank, empty eyes. There's nothing blank or empty about those eyes. You need your eyes examined, Yuka. It was like he'd just woken up from a really long dream. 
I'll bet it was. Big brother. Big brother is going to come. I was absolutely certain about that. He may not have found me yet, but I knew he was looking. He was worried and looking all over for me. It was only a matter of time. Big Brother is my prince, after all. The prince always comes to rescue his princess. He's not coming. After all, he's already here. Your big brother is right here. <laughs> he is come. Shut your mouth. Seriously, Yuka, you're just gonna make him mad. My struggle to get out the words came to an abrupt end as Kizumi's hands pressed down hard on my face, covering my nose and mouth and suffocating me. <coughs> For all the pain and fear I was feeling, I knew I had a chance to fight back. So I bit open my mouth and bit down hard on his palm. Oh, what's... Oh, that's what I would have done in your position, probably, if I was feeling brave. But, what's this? Yuka, fighting back? I am shocked. You might actually, you might actually have a little bit of, you might actually have a little bit of fighting spirit in you that uh, your PC-98 counterpart doesn't have. Which, in which case, good for you, I guess? <laughs> Anyway, if he wasn't gonna be- if he wasn't mad before, he's gonna be fucking pissed. I must have been- have been even harder than I thought. I could taste his blood. Spit it out. You might catch what he has. It was warm and minerally, and slid down my parched throat. Easing a little bit of the pain and dryness. Well, if it's going down your throat, then it's too late now, unless you can get yourself to vomit. You're gonna, you're gonna have what he has. God help us all. <laughs> he is coming! <laughs> Big Brother is coming for sure! I just kept shouting. I didn't care if these were the last words I ever said. I had no regrets. I just wanted to cry out. He's not coming. He's not coming. He's not coming. He's not coming. Your big brother is not coming! Uh, what's going on? I'm... I would ask if you're okay, but he's me, but I'm not going to. You're clearly not anyway, so it'd be kind of pointless for me to ask. It all happened in an instant. Kizumi just grabbed his head in both hands and let out a cry of pain that didn't even sound human. What is it? What is this? What is this voice I'm hearing? Did I really want a little sister? Yes, you did. I did. 
I wanted a little sister. <laughs> someone weaker than I. Yes, someone who needed me. But was it really a little sister that I wanted? So That's right. If I had a little sister, I'd change. You keep throwing your little tantrum, pocket knife. <laughs> My head! <laughs> Good lord, what are you experiencing, an aneurysm? He grabbed his head again and began stumbling around. He looked like he was in real pain. There were even tears in his eyes. I hope that is either your brother or older sister telekinet telekinetically squeezing your, squeezing your brain from the mortal world. That they somehow sense what you're doing right now and are using their mental willpower to basically punish the shit out of you. That would make me smile. Damn it. God damn it. God damn it all. What does it all mean? I don't need a reason. Not now. It's too late for that. This is... This is who I am now. This is what I become. Everything is mine. I stomped out everyone in my way and held my head high the whole time. some headache medicine in my pocket. Why are you doing this for him? Why are you expressing compassion and even offering him Tylenol? Why? It'd actually probably be better for you if his head was hurting constantly. Then he couldn't do anything to you. Because of the pain. Let him feel the pain. Pain woman. It is good for him to experience it in this case. It staves off the inevitable. What is wrong with you? Am I ever glad to see you, Hammer Time? How has it come to this? If I had a little sister, maybe I'd have acted more like a big brother should. Yes. I'm sure of it. I'd have been just like my asshole brother who was crying over me. I really doubt it. To me, To me. He fell to his knees and just stayed like that. Not moving. Maybe not even breathing. <laughs> Hammer time, you have such a goofy f expression on your face right now. Please keep it, it makes me smile.
for another unnerving yell, the huge man at the hammer just stood there, staring at me. He had blood spattered all over him. Somehow, though, I got the impression he wasn't going to attack me. Are you here to save me? Well, there's an expression I've never seen on your poor face before. It's making me sad. He reached one hand toward me, slowly and gently. Though it may have been a little too slowly. He moved like a zombie, as if I were watching a TV show in slow motion. I only heard one oh in that text box. Where was the other one? Don't get lazy on me now. There it is again. It almost seems like he was afraid of me. But I was just a little girl tied to a table. What could he possibly think I'd do to him? Well, I doubt it's the little girl that he's looking at right now, i.e. you, that's scaring the piss out of him right now. Is there someone else here? He didn't answer. I wasn't even sure you heard the question. He wasn't looking at me. He was looking past me. I want to know what you're looking at. Kill her. His mournful yell echoed throughout the room. How the hell am I g possibly going to be able to get out of this? My arms and legs suddenly went slack. I felt like I could move them now. Are you saving me? Slowly, I opened my eyes. And confirmed that this enormous man had just smashed apart the dry knots that were holding my hands and feet in place. Oh my god, he's actually saving me. You're rebelling against vengeful spirit! You're not going to have a good time later on. Poor bastard. I knew I didn't have much time. I tried my hardest to wake up my sleeping hands and feet and shake the broken, splintered ropes from my wrists and ankles. Kill her. Um... Uh, okay, now I'm getting given options. Uh, let's run for the door. After brushing the last piece of rope off my body, I leaped, I leaped to the ground and began searching the room for the best escape route. The huge man may have freed me from my ropes, but I was clearly still in danger. <laughs> Uh, my hands and feet are still numb. I don't know if I can do this. There were still big, indented rope burns on my wrists and ankles, limiting my blood circulation. I wouldn't be moving comfortably for a while yet. Ow! The back door of the classroom was wide open. It seemed broken, actually. It looked like the huge man must have busted it in with his hammer when he came attacking. I decided to make a break for it. First, I tried sidestepping past him, doing everything I could to tread lightly and keep my arms outstretched so the blood would flow to him again. But then, I heard the floor creak behind me. He grabbed you. 
I was too late. There was nowhere left to run. A giant hammer struck my right arm, instantly fracturing it severely. A spray of blood from the impact even got in my eyes. I had a feeling it wouldn't just simply running through the door wouldn't really do me well, but sometimes I want to hold out to hope that just performing the simple, most common sense, sense option will be what gets me the best results in situations like these. And you can't fault me for that, right guys? Pulling out for hope? The huge man raised his hammer in the air again. He swung with perfect precision. And I was down. But he wasn't stopping. Both my arms and legs had been completely destroyed. They looked like giant swatted bugs on the desk. Just a mess of bloody chunks. The last swing hit so hard that it broke the whole desk behind me. I found myself rolling painfully onto the ground. When I hit, there was less a thud and more a plop. Bits of my arms and legs went flying everywhere. And then I realized it wasn't just bits. What was left of my extremities was so damaged that it all literally just snapped off my body. No. This had to be a nightmare. It couldn't be real, could it? I was really like a swag bug. I looked and felt the part completely. <laughs> I didn't want to give up, even though I knew I was doomed. I tried to roll myself toward the door, but that went about as well as you might expect. Roll, Yuka! Roll for dear life! My head was stuck on something. Waves of pain were shooting through my entire torso. I wasn't going to last much longer. Yes, shy. Welcome. I could see the hammer coming down onto my head. And then for a split second, I could see in two opposite directions at once my skull cracked down the middle like a watermelon. Poor watermelon. Now let's consider other options. My arms and legs were still so numb that I couldn't trust myself to get out of the room safely. And I had to think of something else. I had to buy some time. <laughs> it seems like the little girl was pulling the huge man's strings. And he didn't really want to hurt me. So maybe I could reason with him? Hello. Um... What are you what are you doing? Kill her. <laughs> What's wrong? He suddenly doubled over and began clawing at his throat, seemingly in a great deal of pain. Reasoning with him really wasn't going to work. He was too unstable. If it came to me, or the little girl, I was pretty sure I wouldn't win. That might be my best chance to escape. Um, okay, let, 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 let's look, let's look. There's a faucet here. I don't know if it will actually work. 
is what I thought. No water. My throat is so dry. Huh? What do I do? There has to be some way out of this. Holy shit, that gave me 30% three, darkening? Uh, okay, let's uh, look at this. It's a decayed skeletal corpse. There's nothing about its outward appearance that gives any clear indication of age or gender. However, there's a student ID name tag partially lodged in this rib cage that indicates it probably belonged to a junior high school. Ta uh, Takine Municipal Middle School, I Honda. That only gave me just 2%. Okay. The windows are paneled and don't seem to have any means of being open. It's pitch black outside. I guess it must still be nighttime. <laughs> He's going to get up. Uh, okay, uh... What about this? There's a bottle on the ground filled with transparent liquid. Let's take it. I wonder what's in here. It's not... Water, is it? Hydraulic acid. Hydrochloric acid. Ooh, this could do a number. How long are you planning to squat there like that? Kill her. Instinctively, I threw the glass bottle at the huge man with the hammer. <laughs> Note to self, when faced with hammer time, don't use fire, use hydrochloric acid. That actually makes him mo. He flinched and stumbled backwards. His hammer was still raised, however, and smashed into one of the light bulbs on the ceiling, shattering it. It's dark. <laughs> I might be able to get away now. The feeling began returning to my legs, so I wasted no time. Habitually yelling, Excuse me, as I left, I darted through the dark lab, using what I remembered of its land to avoid the obstacles recent door. Well, at least you're courteous enough to say, Excuse me. <laughs> Sachiko's gonna be really mad with you, Hammer Time. She doesn't... She certainly doesn't look happy. Hey. Did you do that on purpose? Worthless scum! Fix it or you get no more rewards from me. What, you got spare light bulbs lying around somewhere? Just go after her already. Okay, that kind of fixing. How many times have we crossed paths with that girl now? Maybe she has the paper scrap to keep her safe. Her fate hasn't been sealed yet. Now, this is some very interesting information. I have to, I have to find somewhere to hide. I could hear the sounds of someone else running, just a short, short distance in front of me. I couldn't make out who it was of any certainty, but I did briefly catch a glimpse of a figure retreating into the darkness. And it looked like... 
ちゃん。ピグ、ブラザー。今のはお兄ちゃんだったよね。That was big brother just now, wasn't it? <笑> I took off in pursuit. If that was big brother, then I just had to catch up to him. Big brother! Big brother! He mustn't have heard me. His pace never slowed, and I saw him disappear around a corner. He's not stopping. I have to go after him. Big brother! Big brother! I would love to see what would happen if I actually went back now. Let's see. This is the room where I was tied up, isn't it? Here, I was tied up, isn't it? I don't want to go in there ever again. I don't want to go in there ever again. Okay. Suit yourself. So I wonder how much of this place I got to explore. Satoshi, are you anywhere around here? The school nurse's office? Looks like he's not in here. Uh oh. I want to hide. going to find me if I stay here. I have to run. Well, maybe I want to stay here. Old medicine bottles have been neatly lined up on these shelves. They all seem to be made of blown brown glass, and virtually every one of them is noticeably cracked, clearly indicating its age. Okay, that raised my darkening up a good bit. Old medicine bottles have been haphazardly packed onto these shelves. The caps are all either loose or missing, and their contents long since evaporate or in bed. Looks like just examining anything in here can bring my darkening up. Yep, there's a large hole in the floor here. The floor may be unstable throughout this whole room. Best to tread lightly. Okay, that's just, just the same thing. You know what? Since my darkening is so high, and since I know that in the last chapter, reaching 100% darkening got me to a wrong end, I might as well just see if it does the same here. Oh, you were so close. Succumb to the darkness! The darkness disappoints me. How dare it. I wonder if this particular thing... Yeah, like the Bunsen burner? Yeah, let's light it! It's not even making noise. Is there any gas coming out? It's not working. I need to find someone else. Okay, let's just... Go through this motion again, and just get it over with. Okay. I have no idea if I'm actually going down the right way or not, and I should just be heading further north, like where it started me out at, like where it started me out, but, well, who knows. Maybe this is actually the correct way I'm supposed to go, after all, and that just going north would just lead me to a dead end or something. Let's at least check to see if I can go here. Like rumbling. Ah! 
Suddenly, my field of vision started going topsy-turvy. Was I falling? It was an earthquake, but there was more than just that. The floor beneath me was moving up and down in time with the quake's left and right motion. Big brother! Big brother! I tried putting one hand on the floor for balance and getting back to my feet. I need to keep going after Big Brother, otherwise I'll lose his trail. I thought I'd done it. I was standing now, and had started getting used to the vibrations. As long as I hugged the walls, I could walk. But it all quite literally, literally came crashing down around me soon enough. The wildly shaking floor cracked, then crumpled, and I was free falling. <laughs> oh boy! Ah, ah, I'm ah! Lovely. I landed down here. Bad things always happen down here. Without fail. I'm doomed. I raised my head and found myself living on top of... Lying on top of a pile of rubble. Excuse me. I wasn't too much worse for wear, though, all things considered. Where am I? I looked all around me frantically, but saw nothing even remotely familiar. This is definitely someplace new. And it didn't feel much like a school anymore. The walls and floor were made from packed dirt, with only railroad ties keeping it all together. <sighs> it's really musty down here. I knew I was underground. I had to be. It just felt that way. There were no windows anywhere, and based on the smell, there was no ventilation either. It's really hard to breathe. Oh no, Big Brother. Big Brother might have gotten caught off guard by that earthquake too. I thought. He could be down here. It was a big one after all. Maybe he was injured. Maybe he couldn't move. I have to find him right away. I tried pushing myself up from the pile of rubble, ready to shoot to my feet and continue the search. That didn't last long, however. My hands and feet were still a little numb from the ropes, making it hard to keep my balance. I fell and back onto my butt. Oh, no. <laughs> my wa underwear was completely waterlogged, like a full sponge. Ew. It squished unpleasantly on the debris, sending a cold chill throughout my, throughout my entire body. What's going on do you forget that you did you forget that you pissed yourself I reached down and felt it and it was absolutely soaked through it would take forever for it to dry that's right I, I peed myself I was so wrapped up in running for my life and chasing after big brother I didn't even notice the wetness, but now I couldn't get it out of my mind. Ugh, it's so gross, but at least you're still alive. So look on the bright side. Tears were welling up in my eyes. How could I be so pathetic? 
I forced myself to my feet, doing my best to try ignoring the squishing sensation. I wouldn't be able to ignore it for long, though. My panties were noticeably heavier now, and the urine they absorbed was practically ice cold. I couldn't go on like this. I was going to get a rash or catch pneumonia or something. Well, could you even catch pneumonia from... There? Never mind. And every step was going to be its own form of mushy, gushy hell. It'd be the hell you would deserve, though, to be fair. The only hell that you deserve. But what could I do? I could take them off, but then what? Carry them with me? Ew. Leave them on the floor for someone else to find? No thanks. Then you are kind of in a bit of a conundrum then. So if I were you, I would just not worry about it and just soldier on through. <laughs> Big brother. Big brother. You can keep saying his name until you make me a millionaire, but I seriously doubt he's going to show up anytime soon when you keep using his name. You know, his I mean his title. I swallowed my pride. Held back my tears as best I could and waddled onward. Isn't there anywhere I can go to get these off? I know just the place. And there's plenty of buckets. Uh, yep, right there. But I'm gonna wait a little bit. We're gonna. I'm just gonna let you uh, suffer in your urine-soaked panties for a bit. This is the revenge I've always wanted against you. For the entirety of Chapter Three, blood-covered, repeated fear. And honestly, be glad that this is the only kind. Of... And honestly, be glad that's the only thing that I want to do to you. Is it locked? Mm -hmm. I'll have to find someplace else. Because I mean, unless it's to get a wrong end, if I was if I was any meaner, I'm sure that I would probably just let Hammer Time just cave your face in just for shits and giggles, even if it didn't help, even if it didn't help my completionist goals any in any way. But no, I'm not that mean. So, enjoy your urine-soaked panties for now. It's a set of skeletal remains. Given its tiny stature, it's very likely belonged to an elementary student in life. There's a student ID name tag halfway lodged inside the poor girl's ribcage. Great Harbor Elementary School. Chihiro Tamamura. Yeah, I think I'm at some point I'm going to need to get back to the part of the chapter where I'm exploring the second floor of the school and see if I can find anything here that I may need, like even if it's just finding more name tags or something, because I clearly can still... I can still collect name tags here, but I mean... What exactly it will do for me if I find them all, I have no idea. But if it does give me like some kind of unlockable or something, then obviously I'll try to find them all. The door is sealed firmly shut. There's no way to open it. Well, that didn't really stop me from looking for and finding them all in blood covered, even if it didn't give me anything, I did it. Other than bragging rights, I suppose. Alright, let's move on. Look. It's, look, it's your favorite. The restroom! Is this an actual bathroom? There are no 
protective seals. And no weird smells. And probably no and probably no holes either. And no uh blood and human remains and guts. And no maggots. And no corpses hanging in the stalls. And just the floor in the restroom in general. And I'm pretty sure that if you went into any of them, you will. I'm pretty sure that if you went into any of them, you won't get locked in there, and ha and the toy won't basically try to flood you with a bloodbath, literal bloodbath, either. Now watch as I just jinx myself. Come on, Sachiko, don't disappoint me. Make me regret saying what I just said. The only bathrooms I'd seen up to this point were unusable. Charms on the door mysteriously soon, the room shut, bodies hanging in the stalls. But this looked to be completely un a completely normal bathroom. Well, relatively speaking, considering where we are. Certainly the most normal I'd seen since getting stuck in this place anyway. And this is, and if there's anywhere, anywhere at all, where there's bound to be a trap of some kind, it is here. And what is the hell is this? There's a loose piece of wood on the ground here. Let's, yeah, why not? Let's take it. This might be useful for something. Required piece of wood. I wonder if I can get in the stalls. I tried pulling on one of the wooden stall doors. Is anybody in here? I listened carefully for any hint of response, even going so far as to hold my breath. I guess if somebody did respond, it would, it would be pretty scary. But there wasn't a single sound to be heard. The entire room was dead silent. The walls were made from packed dirt, after all. And there was a lot of moisture in the air. Effectively, this whole place was naturally soundproofed. This is perfect. There's nobody else around. Huh? I backed away from the stall slightly and almost tripped over a fairly sizable crack in the ground. About five centimeters wide and one centimeter thick. This might be a good spot to hide them. No, uh, I wanted to get you to hide them in the death room. Curse me and my stupid desire to be thorough. Finally, I was able to get out of those warlocked panties. Despite being alone, I still crouched down and removed them as discreetly as I could. I then stuffed them tightly into the crack, I discovered. <laughs> Hole's not big enough. Some it's still sticking out. Who cares? Just, you got rid of them. You found a hole. Don't make, don't make this into a hole, don't make it, finding a way, finding a perfect hole to dispose your panties of another excursion for me to deal with. I beg of you, please. Bad things will happen for sure. Probably, most likely even worse than just going on a quest to find a bathroom. Please just grin and bear it for your own sake, if nothing else. If only it was just a little more space. Then just dig! It's dirt! What do I do now? I know. I, I can use this wood to dig in there and make it bigger. Oh, thank God! She's using her brain. This actually makes me happy. Use piece of wood. I'm so glad Big Brother didn't have to see me doing this. 
I'm sure, I'm glad, I'm pretty sure everybody is, is here is who's watching this video and myself and, you know, me who's playing this game is glad they don't have to actually see anything. We're all glad we are blind. Please, don't let anybody find me until I'm done. Especially not Big Brother. Would you rather be Sachiko? Not that Big Brother would likely be likely to wander into a girl's bathroom. But it was possible given the circumstances. At least you would at least you can recognize that. So just to be safe, I figured it couldn't hurt to pray that it didn't happen. Mm -hmm. Maybe I should step them down even farther. Do just you got it. It's good enough. Leave. Run. Skid skidoosh. Move. It'd be embarrassing if anyone were to find these after all. Even if they do find them, how the hell do you think they're going to know that they belong to you specifically? For all they know, they could be they could belong to some crossdresser. Yes. Okay. My underwear was now totally buried out of buried and out of sight. There was no way anyone could come across it if they didn't know it was there. Actually, it could also belong to somebody's dog. Because there are people out there who put actual human under undergarments on their pets. As degrading as that sounds. Satisfied, I stood up. <sighs> it's so drafty now. Well, uncover. Well, unco. Well, going pantyless will do that. But it's still a lot better than wearing wet panties. <laughs> it's been nothing but earthquakes since we got here. You sure that wasn't Sachiko just slamming hammer time so hard that he basically went flying through several walls up up on the ground level? <laughs> I wonder if this place will be okay. It seems even older than the school building. Excuse me? I peeked my head out from the bathroom and looked around. Nobody's out there, right? Big, Big brother! Big brother! My voice echoed a lot louder than I was expecting. It actually surprised me. Considering the wet dirt walls, I didn't think sound would travel that far. Uh, mm, I'm scared. If any of your big brother's friends are nearby, please. I hardly want to wash my hands. I began walking through the hall once again, this time a bit slower and more unevenly due to exhaustion. I wonder if one of the requirements for one of the wrong ends requires me to let force her to keep her urine soaked panties. I would almost bet money on it. That somehow, somehow, keeping on to, holding on to her urine soaked panties would result in a very, very unpleasant death for poor Yuka. Because why the fuck not? Considering all the other wonderful, gruesome deaths I've been exposed to in just this game alone, I'm pretty sure I could find some way to uh, use urine soaked panties and make something especially squeamish for me to suffer through. The writers of these of these stories have proved their credentials, I think, in being able to write gruesome, squeamish deaths. Why not let them surprise me just a little more? Even though I really don't want them to. It's really dark in here. No, it's not. Corpse! 
It's a set of skeletal remains. There doesn't seem to be any way to determine gender from clothing or build alone. Oh. Okay. It didn't go up a massive amount. Okay, that's good. But there is a student ID name tag nearby, bearing a traditionally feminine name. Komashiro Trade School, Sakura Mot Motoi. There's a cabinet here that looks big enough to fit a whole person inside. Might make a good hiding spot. If anyone comes here, maybe I should close myself inside here. But, but if anyone did come, it would be really scary. So maybe I should just get out of this room while I can. Ye I swear. It's like it's like magic. Think, uh, look, at, look at this closet, and sure enough, hammer time will appear. Was like the the door to the room suddenly slammed shut, and the inside of it was missing its doorknob, rendering it unopenable. It seemed I'd been locked in. What do I do? Is there any is there anything in here I can use in place of a doorknob? Maybe one of these bones? There's a key inside the cabinet. Let's take it. I got a key. I wonder if I can use this key to get out. A key is not a doorknob, Yuka. I should at least give it a try. I guess the key doesn't do me much good without a doorknob. No shit, Yuka. I quietly returned the key to its spot inside the cannon. Why not just hold on? Oh my god, I went up 71%. I can't be reckless, can I? There's a fairly... Oh, wait. Since it's 70%, if it goes up another 30%, I just fucked myself, didn't I? There's a fairly large stone sitting on the heavy wooden table. Leave it! I don't think a stone like... Oh, my God. I thought that would save me. I thought that would save me. Oh, dear Lord. I don't think a stone like this would be able to force open a door that heavy. Maybe there's something else. <laughs> Just get it over with. Painting? It hurts. Big brother, it hurts. I couldn't move any part of my body. I just fallen completely limp, and my vision had gone black. I felt like I was being swallowed up by the darkness, and there was nothing I could do to stop it. It was seeping in every part of me. Big brother, help. Well, at least it's an actual wrong end this time. Wrong end number three, to be precise. Okay, I decided to uh, go back to a, a bit early in the chapter so I can explore this, the second floor of the school and maybe even the third floor if I can go up any of the stairs. Because I really, now that I've thought about it earlier, want to make sure that I find all the student ID tags I can come across. So, bear with me, guys. <laughs> I'll get right back down to the underground bomb shelter sooner, sooner or later. Hopefully sooner. Big brother, where did you go? It's too quiet. I don't think he came this way. I should, I should look for him back in the main hallway. You sure? Okay, I guess I have to. Hey! No, no, no! Get back there. You're one space too far. Okay, let's go 
really cold in here. Is my darkness still going up? No. There's no taking it back. There's no going back. There's no... The paper is torn at this point. Cutting off the rest of the sentence. Did I just do myself? What's in here? It's a wooden shelving unit with a glass door. It doesn't seem to be locked. Unfortunately, there's nothing useful inside. Now's no time. Not time. Now's no time to search the shelves anyway. I have to find my big brother. Okay, get it open. You are stronger. I'd be, maybe I'd be able to. Brother, where did you go? Okay, this way. This way. Move your tush. What's in here? He's not here either. Big brother? <gasps> He's right on top of me. He'll find me if I stay in here. That's from the principal. Remain alert when walking home from school. Report suspicious behavior and keep to the main roads. Prevention is the key to safety. Yeah, yeah. Whatever you say, you pervert. It's locked. There doesn't seem to be any way to open it. Well, at least it's not jumping me up like 30 fucking percent each and every time. Thank God. North, even though I doubt I could go up these stairs too. Brother, where did you go? I'm quiet. I don't think you came this way. Oh, from the main hallway, yes, yes, yes. Alright, let's go down here. Brother, are you in here? It's Yuka. If you're here, please come out. He's not in here either. I don't see any good places to hide. Before, seems like you could give away any minute. Scared. Big brother, where did you go? Anywhere but anywhere but where you are, clearly. And there's not even a thing for me to look at it anywhere in here. Not even a mocking poster on the wall. Come on, Sachiko. You can afford to mock me a little more through messages, can't you? Taunt me! Make me cry. He's not in here. Huh. Resist your fate. That wasn't a taunt, Sachi. May I have those fingernails? 
That's better. Okay, 72%. It's wooden shelving you with a glass door. It's hard to tell what's inside due to the darkness of the room, but it doesn't seem to be locked. Is it hair? Yup. The shelves are filled to, o to overflowing with hay human hair. The sheer amount of it forces the doors wide open as soon as that latch is sprung. With some efforts, the door is latched shut again. There's hair all over the floor now. It smells awful. <laughs> She's Sachiko is still leaving her, her her spare hair lying around in the shelves. Have you no shame, girl? It just won't open. Even hitting it does nothing. It's not even shaking from the impact. It's like it's not it's like not even a, a window at all, but it's another part of the wall. Okay. I think that's everything here, so let's move on. Here, please come out. Wow, not a single corpse. Hmm. So, was just coming here just a waste of time then? So far, it's starting to look that way. Okay, now this is just plain. I will see you guys again shortly once I get to well, something new. You know what? I'm just gonna go ahead and explore a little more in here before I go back into the death room too. I'm horrible, I know, but I just gotta be thorough, I gotta check. Even if it's for something tiny. Like this! It's a decayed skeletal corpse. A clothing and diminutive stature suggests this was likely an elementary school boy. His name tag is still pinned to his breast pocket. Great Harbor Elementary School, here at Hiroshi Tantanico. 1%. Sustained corpse, based on outward appearance and uniform, this was likely a junior high school girl. Her student ID name tag seems to have survived intact. Takine Municipal Middle School, Koi Ka Kawahara. Nothing here. All right, let's go here.
Nothing. Okay, just got this little hallway left to go through. Really is looking like as though the death room is definitely where I need to go. I didn't know I could even go in here. The door to this particular room was shuddering ever so slightly, as if were uh, as if there was a breeze blowing against it gently from inside. I think I can open this. Slowly and hesitantly, I put both hands on the doorknob and started to turn. I guess I can go in. Alright, let's see what's in here. I hope it connects to an exit somewhere. It smells awful. As soon as the door opened even a crack, a powerful, horrible stench slammed into my face and twisted around my nasal cavities like a jet of water. This is... I smell something rotting. I was instantly feeling nauseous and lightheaded. As if I were suddenly deprived of oxygen. I can't do this. I need to get out of here. Is there, like Is there water in here? No. I can tell you up front, no. Holding my nose, I stepped back into the room and crept over toward the source of the noise. If there were water here, maybe I could wash my hands, I thought. You got better things to worry about than washing your hands, honestly. Where is it? My extreme thirst came back full force as well. Clean water was the greatest thing I could have possibly found at this point. <laughs> I accidentally kicked over a bucket, spilling its contents onto the ground in front of me. <laughs> there are flies. They're back. They're buzzing in my ears. Countless flies immediately flew out from the overturned bucket and began swarming all around me. Their buzzing wings sounded right against my ears, as if they were attacking me. Get out of there! They're bothering me! I let go of my nose and began flailing my arms wildly, attempting in vain to drive them away. I can't even see my hands in front of my face. As I haphazardly stumbled forward, I found my foot splashing in a shallow liquid. A few moments later, my hand came in contact with a wall and brushed against a switch. I heard a, flank, a faint clicking sound, and then... The lights blinked on, and I got a clear look at the room I was standing in. I remember this room. What is this place? Are those bodies? Well, they're not mannequins, I can tell you that much. A large portion of the floor had been dug had been dug out into something resembling a pool, which was filled with stagnant, discolored water and dismembered bodies. The bodies were decomposing a lot faster than they naturally would, on account of the wetness. Most of them had swarms of maggots instead of faces. Several bodies had actually washed up on the ground, outside the pool as well. Those few that still had limbs looked like they may lose them at any moment. Their torsos were all swollen and black, and everything else was bone white. Why are there so many bodies in one place? Probably because it's a dumping ground. The closest body was, spurt, was spurting a sappy mucus from its nose and mouth and staring at me with an ugly, mean expression. 
The thick fluid came, coming out of it was reddish brown in color. It seemed to be a disgusting mixture of blood and dead bugs. Lovely. What's that sound? Some sort of huge, d d huge door high along the top of the wall opened up. I could clearly feel a breeze blowing through the room. It was a trash chute. If I climb up here, maybe I can get back into this school. What is that? I can hear something. It's getting closer. I was afraid of what might be coming through that hole, so I put some distance between it and myself. <laughs> Something heavy fell from above and splashed into the pool, spraying my face with rotten, stagnant water. Stay! Stay! A, a body! A body! Uh oh, someone's hurting. The body that had just fallen into a pool of water was wearing a school uniform. As soon as it touched the liquid, it began bubbling and melting into it as if it were a bag of ingredients tossed into a stew pot. One of the poor victims' lungs floated to the surface giving the whole scene even more of a sick, soup-like appearance. I need to get out of here, now! Stay in here any longer. And I bet you're gonna be trapped in here, right? I dragged my wet foot on a dry part of the ground for a second or two, then made a dash for the door. Never mind. As soon as I was back out in the hall, I fell to my knees in shock. I couldn't even move. The smell of death and decay was still sticking to me, and still trying to sneak its way into my nose. It was all I could do not to throw up on the spot. I hadn't eaten anything for hours, so I'm not even sure what I would actually throw would have thrown up. Would have actually thrown up. But I still felt like I had to, more strongly than ever before. Maybe it would have been best just to let it come out. I'm sure it would have felt I would have felt better afterward. But I honestly didn't want to see my own vomit right now. And after all the other disgusting things I'd seen. I'd had enough. Why? That's all this happened. Because you all wanted to be friends forever. That's why. See what happens when you want to be friends forever with uh, with someone? Bad Aesop, I, bad Aesop, I know, but hey. That's kind of the lesson here that this the whole scenario seems to be teaching, so... Hear that, or, you know, just don't mess with voodoo charms. At times like this especially, I really longed for my big brother. If only he were here with me. You're always longing for him. I cried out for him as if in prayer. Big brother, please come save me. Come save me. I can't move. Somebody there? Is somebody there? Uh-oh. Well, you're fucked. Again. It hurts. That's usually what you're making everyone else around you say. 
There was a little girl here with an arm with an arm outstretched, begging for help. I rushed over to her side. What's wrong? Are you alright? She was faintly glowing. Is she a ghost? The worst one you could run into. Um, my stomach really hurts. And my chest feels like it's on fire. She seems to be in a lot of pain. But all I can do for her is... Here? I don't see any injuries. Is it painful? It hurts. Uh, um... All I could do for her was offer her physical comfort. If I rubbed her back, maybe she'd feel better. Thanks. I'm sorry. This is all I know how to do. It feels a little better now. Does it? I'm so glad to hear that. <laughs> the girl grimaced again, as if she were experiencing some new pain all of a sudden. You shouldn't push yourself too hard, okay? Okay. So, did you get lost in here too? Uh-uh. I don't know. I just woke up in here. Woke up? I've been so alone. Maybe if you cry enough crocodile tears, you'll be able to, feed, to quench the thirst of an entire village before sundown. Keep at it! They're thirsty! Oh, so you've been all alone all this time? You've been a real trooper then. I gently brushed my hand against a, a little girl's face, wiping away her tears. The crocodile tears are real. I only just met her, but I already f really felt for her. She had it a lot worse than I did. So tell me, what's your name? Sachiko. 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 Sachiko chan te yu no ne? Sachiko. Your name is Sachiko? Mm. Uh huh. Watashi wa Yuka da yo. Mochida Yuka. I'm Yuka. Yuka Mochida. Yuka. Yuka. Yuka o ne chan. Big sister Yuka. O ne chan? O ne chan ka. Big sister? You want me to be your big sister? <laughs> oh, how I bet Kizumi would have very much wanted to be in your shoes right now. Huh? Hmm? Oh. It's just a little weird to hear somebody call me big sister, that's all. But I like it. I took Sachiko's tiny little hand in my own and pulled her to her feet. There we go. You can stand, right? Sachiko's hand was so thin and light compared to my own. Not just light. It almost felt like it was completely weightless. I guess she really is a ghost. Sachiko noticed me staring at her. And I must have had quite a look on my face. This seemed to bother her, so I did my best to force a smile. I'm sure she was worried I'd leave her all by herself again. And I wanted to make sure she knew I was here for her. What's wrong, big sis? Uh, uh, oh, nothing. I was just thinking about something else. I'm sorry. That is the most insincere thing that you have ever spoken to me, ever. You should be ashamed of yourself. I know how I know you. 
Sachiko lowered her head and looked like she was about to cry. Why are you apologizing? Sachiko, because I think I'm a ghost. I'm different from you, big sis. So I'm sorry if I scare you. Was just my fear really upsetting this little girl so much? That's terrible. She's playing you like a damn fiddle. I took Sachiko's hand in both of mine, turning to face her and ducking down a little so her eyes were level. It's okay. I'm scared of ghosts, but I'm not scared of you. I promise. You're not scared? For real? If she's going to show her true colors at any point, I think it's now. Just to scare you. No, I'm not. I'm not scared of you, Sachiko. Big sis? Are you going to leave me? Um... I did have to think for a moment, since I knew I couldn't take a ghost with me very far. But in the end, I also knew I couldn't just leave her. Well, will you come with me to look for my big brother? Your big brother? Yeah. He's a really, he's a really kind, really dependable person. I'm sure he'll be really nice to you too, Sachiko. I just like how this is a complete reversal of the situation that she found herself earlier with Keys and me. But the little, but the younger, but the younger, but the younger sibling in this relationship, so to speak, is the homicidal maniac rather than the older one. Also, no actual relation. Her head was still down, but her eyes were peeking up at me. She looked nervous, but for the first time since we started talking, she also looked hopeful. Sachiko, mo, ni itte ii no? You don't mind if Sachiko comes with you? Sure. You're not alone anymore. Yuka, your big sister is right here for you. I really hate that you are I honestly truly hate that you're a that you're a crazy homicidal maniac because I again I think I said this before in a previous episode but you do have, truly have an adorable smile. Please don't kill me. Honestly, I was lonely too. I probably wanted her with me just as badly as she wanted someone with her. Ghost or no? Come on, Sachiko. Let's go. I turned to head back down the hall, but was stopped by Sachiko tugging on my uniform. She was wearing a forced smile on her face, but still looked uneasy. Big sis, will you do what I say? It begins. What? You say? <laughs> What was she going to tell me to do? I was so surprised by the question, I wasn't sure how best to respond. But the longer I thought about it, the more uneasy she looked, so... Your big sister will listen to any request you make. Really? Huh? You can ask me anything you want, anytime. Okay. It was clearly something specific she had in mind. But I wasn't going to push her about it. She'd ask me when she was ready. She seemed to be satisfied with my answer and let go of my uniform. And so, hand in hand, we continued down the hall in search of my big brother. 
Okay, so I guess we got the demon wave to accompany us. Yay! Anyway, I, I think I'll just go ahead and cut the episode off here. Clearly, I think I might be on the on the path to uh, the to the true end for this chapter. Maybe. If not, then well, I can always just try the death room again before finding Sachiko here. So eventually, I will I will uh, complete this chapter. So it's only a matter of time. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this latest episode of Corpse Party Book of Shadows. If you did and you want to see more content from me, feel free to subscribe to my channel. I'll see you guys next time. Take care.